Our next speaker on proposition is Naja Al Otaibi. Naja is a Saudi Arabian policy analyst based in London. She's worked for a number of British and American think tanks, focusing on the policies of gender, security, counterterrorism, public diplomacy, and soft power. Naja, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, for inviting me to this interesting debate. Um, I was uh, in Middle East for four months, and I moved from different countries, and I would like to share with you what I have seen on ground, especially in countries that witnessed uh, revolutions and others that didn't. So the first country I went to was Saudi Arabia. I was commissioned to write a report about religious education reform. I went there for five weeks, and I have seen a revolution social reform, economic reform, even somehow political reform. I've seen women becoming more liberal, walking publicly in jeans. It's something that we haven't seen before. Shops are open during prayer times, which was not the case 10 years ago. I have interviewed women working in politics. Some were uh, belonging to Shia community. Shia community is a religious sect in Saudi Arabia, and for long, this sect was not, didn't have a representation in politics and in, in government. Um, I, I've spoken, I remember I've spoken to this uh, lady who is uh, working in this um, Shura Council. It's, uh, it's like a parliament in Saudi. So she was working in, in politics. And I remember asking her about things that she's witnessing in the country. And she said she's nowadays representing this community because this community has been marginalized for a long time. Uh, she was telling me about the judicial system, how it's changing. And you know, I was surprised to learn that the capital punishment in the country, which was applied for thousands and thousands of years, have changed. So flogging has now abolished. I was wondering, a country like this revolution was made without an actual revolution in, 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 in the sense that you know, people going out and asking for these changes. How is it possible that you know, this kind of revolution is happening? Peacefully. Can I take I'm sorry. Can I, take, can I say something? Of course. Sure. Um, so it's really nice to dress up the Arab Spring and kind of democracy and human rights, but what was at the, the basis of it was economic upheaval. Just people being too poor to afford to, to, to get bread, to pay their rent. That, that was the problem. Saudi Arabia, we didn't have this problem. Saudi Arabia people, you know, with all due respect, were bought by the state. They had political problems. There were women's rights who had problems. but. There was not economic upheaval. People lived very, very comfortably. They are some of the richest people in the world. Yeah, but not everyone in Saudi is, is not. Not everyone in Saudi is is I would like to see satisfied. Saudi Arabia as one of the highest living standards in the world by a long shot. Yeah. So to compare the Arab Spring, where people are so poor that they can't even feed their families, to Saudi Arabia, doesn't seem like a fair comparison for for a revolution. Yeah, but it is. Can I say something? I mean, every country has different issues, okay? So some countries, they have poverty. Other countries, they, they want civil rights or human rights or women's rights. So every country was different in their demands. So I went to Egypt for a vacation in the same year. Worst human rights situation. Massive employment, unemployment. Um, I've seen uh, artists, actresses uh, flee in the country because you know, things are not improving after the revolution. Um, so I was also thinking, this is a country that has two revolutions and nothing has, has been achieved. Um, so, so uh, yeah, I, I guess, um, I guess the, the and, and Egypt is not the only country which is facing, you know, these troubles. Other countries, 
you know, which have seen protests such as Libya, for example, Syria, Yemen, they all have the same issues. So every country that has a, an actual revolution, this revolution brought nothing but miseries to these countries. That's what I, what I think. You said a lot of good things about Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Saudi Arabia, though, still has the death penalty for LGBT people. Yeah, absolutely. And Saudi Arabia killed 2,000 of its own citizens last year. I don't think that all this the um, revolution in Saudi Arabia. But the point is, is the point is how things are addressed, how problems are addressed without blood, without things that we have seen in the Arab world. It doesn't mean that everything in Saudi or in Egypt is perfect, but how do the government address these issues? And they can achieve a lot without revolution. Look at these countries with revolution, nothing. What is your definition of achievement? Because I think it's a very toxic like, concept of, because people went on the streets and some events happened that everything should change. So I would like to know your opinion. Like what is actually an achievement or a revolution in your opinion? I didn't get that. So you mean achievement you that in the case of that, Egypt? Yeah, you said that two revolutions happened in Egypt and nothing, nothing has been so. achieved, yeah. Because the people, when they went out to the streets, they demanded freedom. They, they wanted to have a better economic situation. They wanted to uh, have solution to unemployment, to poverty. I have seen in Egypt things. I haven't seen it anywhere in, in the world, such as you know, the poverty is a, is a big deal. And this is why Egyptians, they went to the streets because of, of poverty. Say that because people went on to the streets for 60 days that everything should change and Egypt should be heaven. Did that ever happen in history before? The people revolved for two months and now it's all perfect? It's not perfect. Like it's not perfect. That's what I'm arguing about. All this revolution brought nothing to those countries other than misery. On the other hand, look at the other countries which didn't witness any revolution. They're doing better. Um, that is, yeah, this is my, my opinion, I think. Yes. Well, no free modernization in Saudi Arabia currently is because of false liberalization that only rich sections of Saudi society have access to, and they've been implemented by the regime, the ruling powers, Saudi Arabia to improve their image to the West, while horrific human rights abuses against the media, against people like Shaman Khashoggi, continue undeterred because they, find if they, because they can improve their image to the West by allowing women to drive or allowing women to wear jeans. These are not the kind of rights that people in the Arab Spring fought for, and these quiet revolutions aren't as important aren't as impactful or as accessible to actually oppress people in these countries as you might think. Could you address this? Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I don't think Saudi is interested in, the, in improving the image or what the other countries are, are interested to see in Saudi. I think they are responding to what people want. I'm a woman and, and yeah, I lived in Saudi for some times and I know that many women wanted to have access to education, access to work, um, which I, I think the government now is responding to it. Every country has its own issues. Yes, Saudi doesn't have maybe an economic issue, but they have other issues, human rights, women's rights, capital punishment, and they are addressing it without a revolution. Um, other countries, they have different issues, but their revolution, the protest, has done nothing to improve it. What is your, what is your definition of the revolution? Please keep it to ask for points of information, and then if they accept, then you can carry on. Yes, please. It's fine. <laughs> it, it's a debate. Purified define revolution by a movement and top down by a man who has come to power by replacing any other person who came into question, trampling upon the rights of the Yemen people, bombing the hell out of this country, and also beheading the same people in Saudi Arabia. How do you define it as a revolution? 
I think really we are coming a lot across um, of the theme that we were supposed to talk about, which is the Arab Spring and the Arab Revolution, um, and talking about that kind of stuff. Could you please address that as well? Yeah, I didn't get the question. <laughs> I've been speaking about the whole. Thing. <laughs> Top down from some from, from, from guys like the, like the MDS, or is there genuinely something coming from bottom to up? Yeah, it's definitely. I, I, this is how I see it. I'm not a, a government spokesman person, Top but. Yes, I think things are coming from bottom to uh, top. People wanting these rights that they are getting, um, it's not something that's been forced into them. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether, yeah, just like, um, uh, so, yeah, we were talking about Libya. Yeah, I think the reason why the um, Arab Spring didn't achieve its um, goals uh, is because all of, you know, people when they came calling for revolution, for, for you know, democracy, they did not choose or have a, an understanding of a form of a democracy that suits them, suits their cultural, historical um, uh, characteristics. They were calling for democracy as we see it here in the West, uh, which is something not applicable in the Arab world, I think, because Western democracy, you can't apply Western democracy in the Arab world. Um, mainly... In the last minute, um, just in the interest of time, if you'd let her conclude, that's all right. We'll do a floor speech. I, do, I don't mind if you, if you ask a question. <laughs> it's a debate. <laughs> I just want to ask why you think that the Western democracy would not apply or be working uh, in, in the Middle East? Yeah, for example, look at here in the West, we always have faith in institutions, regardless who is governing the country. It's not in the same way in the Arab world. You know, if you ask any person, the majority of people in the Arab world will always prioritize religion, mainly Islam, on citizenship. Um, here it's completely different. The, the, the institution, the system is always a dominant factor. Uh, so that, that is something the Arab world we don't have, I think. Yeah, I always conclude. <laughs>